Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers parking enforcement, de-escalation, and professional conduct and comes to us from WISN 12 News' channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. Let's dive right in and audit the interaction. In the early morning hours of January 26th, 2018, Milwaukee Bucks guard Sterling Brown was illegally parked in a Walgreens parking lot where Officer Joseph Grams of the Milwaukee Police Department spots Mr. Brown's vehicle and initiates contact. How you doing? You got a driver's license? Where's that? Where's your driver's license? Back up. You don't see you don't see you don't you don't, you don't see the issue here? Hold on. Notice the confrontational nature of Officer Grams's engagement. It was Officer Grams who closed the distance between himself and Mr. Brown, but then demands that Mr. Brown step back, and even goes as far as to physically push Mr. Brown to assert his dominance. The Milwaukee Police Department's official code of conduct includes six core values which operate as guiding principles for the department's officers. Under the values of respect and restraint in the official codebook, officers are expected to act with fairness, self-control, tolerance, and impartiality when carrying out their duties, as well as exercise restraint in the use of force and act in proportion to the seriousness of the offense and the legitimate law enforcement objective to be achieved. Mr. Brown has not been aggressive or threatening in any way, yet Officer Grams has already made physical contact with him. If Officer Grams felt threatened or entrapped in any way, he could have taken a step back and given Given himself more room to be comfortable. Instead, Officer Grams demands that courtesy of Mr. Brown and perceives Mr. Brown's reluctance to move as a threat. You don't see the issue here. You're not parked across three lanes. Uh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. 2390. Can't get another squad here. Back up. Back up. For what? Are you obstructing me? I, I just told you to back up. I just told you to back up. Everything you camera, okay? You touch me first. That's right, I told you to back up. Because you're going to try and get in the car. I'll do what I want, all right? I own this right here. According to a 2004 article published in the Police Chief Journal, the police environment is predominantly governed by the principle of our word against their word. The foremost message is survival, be it warding off physical injury or death or the onslaught of public criticism. Police culture mandates adhering to the chain of command and becoming dependent on and supportive of one's partners or fellow officers. This attitude drafts a rigid mentality which facilitates a cultural distinction between a law enforcement officer and a citizen. Officers are trained to prioritize their own safety and the safety of their colleagues far above any potential threat, and then trained to constantly expect danger and violence from any encounter with civilians. This combination of cultural hierarchy and relentless training results in a warped psychological perspective that directly clashes with the principles and expectations associated with modern policing. This statement is a testament to the egomaniacal mantra that is drilled into every cadet's head during training and goes against the fundamental policing principles of civility, service, and objectivity. It is clear that Officer Grams is a victim of poor training, little oversight, and a complete lack of discipline. You don't own me so what's your name? You say I didn't say I own you. I said I own this. Well, this is me. Don't touch me. You don't own what's me. Your so don't touch me. What's your name? What's your name? I'm asking you. I'm telling you, These are simple questions, man. No, I'm answering. These are simple questions, no and you're being and you're being you. like and you're being all bad to me. All right. I asked you a question so I could verify this. Okay. Right. You don't think I see these that are whatever? I don't know. Fake. I mean, I so I'm asking you your I name. Use real IDs. I don't. Okay. I don't know who you are. Okay. So that's why I asked. 
Conflict escalation is a division of systems theory which details the process by which conflicts grow in severity over time. Conflicts begin with a disagreement and often end in hostility and polarization if peaceful intervention does not occur. The law enforcement parallel to conflict escalation is the use of force continuum, which begins with officer presence and ends with lethal force. The purpose of de-escalation training is to hinder the acceleration of the use of force continuum and avoid inflicting bodily harm in an effort to control a situation. A principal aspect of de-escalation is the proper use of conversational tone and appropriate body language. This graph, developed by Lt. Jeremy Romo of the St. Louis Police Department, demonstrates the important role that nonverbal communication plays in conflict resolution. Milwaukee officers undergo over a thousand hours of de-escalation training, yet officer Grams has placed the burden of de-escalation onto Mr. Brown through his excessively hostile conversational tactics and confrontational body language. Mr. Brown has made no hostile gestures toward Officer Grams and has provided him with the information he requested in a frustrated but peaceful way. I asked for an I these are these are legitimate questions, right? I ain't got no problem with it. Okay, well, you, you look at me like I got something going on in my head, all right? No, I was just saying you touch me, that's the issue. That's right, because you got up in my face, okay? I got up in your face, right? Really? I asked you Come to back on, up and Come you on. did not do it. I asked you to back up and you did not do it. You backed up by three inches, all right? Everything I'm doing is on camera, dude. I don't care. These are legitimate. These are legitimate requests, all right? So, can you explain this to me? I mean, parked across, parked across two, you have an entirely empty parking lot, and you parked across two parking. Go into the Walgreens. In many states, law enforcement officers have extremely limited authority to enforce traffic laws on private property and may not enforce petty laws such as seatbelt requirements outside of the public domain. Generally, traffic signs on private property are not supported by state laws or local ordinances, but operate more so as suggestions designed to maintain the safety of individuals on the property. Wisconsin Statute 346.02 grants officers the authority to enforce traffic laws upon all highways and includes private roadways where the owner has agreed to allow traffic enforcement in the definition of the phrase highway. At this point in the interaction, it has been established that Mr. Brown committed a minor traffic violation and Officer Grams is within his authority to stop Mr. Brown and ask for his identification. However, Mr. Brown does not owe the officer an explanation for his actions and Officer Grams demand for commentary and ensuing lecture is unnecessary, unprofessional, and only serves to further escalate the encounter. Officer Grams has more than enough information to issue Mr. Brown a citation and move on to the next call, but instead, the officer proceeds to instigate a reaction from Mr. Brown through his condescending tirade. At, at what time? In and out. Oh, long enough time where I sat here for about a minute and I was in came out. out. I pulled, I pulled up, parked right here, I was running out, that's it. So what, what, like, what are we doing? Like, what's the situation? Oh, we're gonna wait. On what? I'm waiting, I'm waiting for my partner. I understand that, but... What? Well, you had, you had time to park across these lanes here, so... So... So we're gonna wait a little longer. To what? We're just going to figure it out, man. I know, all right, so what, what, what are we figuring out? We're going to figure out what we're going to do. Whether you're going to get tickets, whatever. You can't do that by yourself? Yeah, thanks. But yeah, I'm trying to get I'm trying to get on the horn to cancel all this. I just wanted I just wanted one. I just wanted one. All right. 
Officer Grams radios for backup and several squad cars arrive. Multiple officers begin to surround Mr. Brown and soon after, the incident begins to spiral out of control. The officers take Mr. Brown to the ground and taser him, but ultimately did not charge him with a crime or issue him a citation. Following the incident, Mr. Brown sued the city of Milwaukee for violating his constitutional rights. An internal investigation was launched into the incident, which resulted in disciplinary action against eight MPD officers, three of which received suspensions. One officer was fired after posting racially charged tweets mocking Mr. Brown and boasting about his role in the encounter. The Milwaukee City Council went on to approve a $400,000 settlement offer, which Mr. Brown turned down to further pursue the litigation. The city purposefully inflated the settlement offer in a hardball move to deter Mr. Brown's legal endeavor by taking advantage of the federal rule of civil procedure known as Rule 68. Under Rule 68, Mr. Brown would be responsible for the city's legal fees and incurred expenses if he were to lose the case or eventually win damages less than the $400,000 offer. The terms of the settlement also specifically named the city and essentially absolved the individual officers of any wrongdoing. Brown's attorney, Mark Thompson, condemned the settlement offer and the city's attempt to save face instead of admitting wrongdoing and declared that any offer that does not include an official apology will not be accepted. Mr. Brown's case is still ongoing. Overall, Officer Grams and the Milwaukee Police Department get an F for escalating what could have been a simple traffic ticket into a physical altercation which resulted in no official charges or citations. In 2017, the MPD was featured by CBS News for its training programs specifically targeted at conflict de-escalation. If this interaction is any representation of the over 1,000 hours of highly decorated and nationally recognized de-escalation training endured by Milwaukee officers, then this this interaction should also serve as evidence that there is a catastrophic flaw embedded deep within the officer training process that poses an ominous threat to civilians everywhere. If an incident like this can happen to a high-profile celebrity and result in a lack of accountability and yet another city insulating its officers from their wrongdoings, then it can happen to anyone and there is no question that officer misconduct has become a national epidemic. Mr. Brown gets an A for remaining calm during this interaction and following up this encounter with legal action. I commend Mr. Brown for challenging the actions of the Milwaukee Police Department on principle and refusing to accept the crooked and unethical settlement offerings of the city. Mr. Brown is breaking the status quo of police accountability by refusing the settlement terms and pressing on with his lawsuit. Far too many instances similar to this one result in much less transparency and disciplinary action for the officer officers and a disproportionate compensation for the victims. It was only a matter of time before an officer victimized a citizen whose silence and recompense could not be bought in a settlement, and I sincerely hope that Mr. Brown pushes his case as far as it can go and holds these officers accountable for their actions. Let us know if there's an interaction or legal topic you would like us to cover in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more police interaction content.